Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I want to revisit one of my earliest opponents and that is Phuket Word. Today he's put out a video on why Eratosthenes was wrong. Now, as many of you may remember, I did Eratosthenes' experiment along with Blue Marble Science last March. We did two things. First, we confirmed the circumference and the radius of the Earth to a very high degree of accuracy. And second, without question, we proved that the Earth was not flat and was in fact spherical. Now, Phuket Word didn't really like that and he put out this video on why Eratosthenes was wrong. So let's have a look and see what he has to say. Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. You're an idiot. You're a moron. You're stupid. You don't know science or physics. You don't understand scale. You can't think in 3D. You don't understand the model. Science proves that we live on a spinning globe. It's been known for thousands of years. I'm smarter than you. I've got a degree. Astronomers, geologists, pilots, they all know we live on a globe. You're an idiot. Well, this may turn out to be a shorter video than I anticipated. These are the kinds of comments that you'll hear from proponents of the globe Earth belief when they're attacking flat earthers. And it's because their belief in a heliocentric model is being attacked that they go on the defense. Oh my. Well, cue up the music. Let's get started. It's understandable that, for the most part, most of us will readily accept and believe that we live on a spinning globe. It's been taught to us since we were kids. And it's been taught that it's been proven with scientific measurements for thousands of years. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the very foundation of the globe Earth belief. And we'll see how everything about the heliocentric model is nothing more than interpretations of measurements and observations that have been made throughout history. Yes, it's my interpretation that this pen is five and a half inches long. Of course, that's open to interpretation, according to Paquette. So let me be clear right from the start that nothing changes when it comes to the distances that we can measure things on the Earth. I'm not talking about maps or alternatives, but the measurements that we can make on this Earth and the observations that we can make of luminaries and celestial objects do not change. Except it's not really luminaries and celestial objects that we're measuring. We're measuring stars, planets, asteroids. We actually know what these things are. Get across here is that things like equinoxes, lunar eclipses, um, the angle at which we see the sun, moon, and stars in the sky doesn't dictate that we live on a globe. What we have to understand is that if we are going to be scientific and pragmatic, that the measurements and the observations that we can make are all open to interpretation. Well, that's really cool, Nick. Um, they have been interpreted, and the interpretation is that the Earth is a globe. All right? And that's what makes everything fit. 
our interpretation of our measurements say the Earth is a globe. There's no question about it. And the idea that we live on a globe orbiting the sun in a heliocentric solar system is built entirely on assumptions and calculations to create a model that has no basis in reality. You know, Nick, let me help you out here a little bit. A scientific model is designed to help us understand the natural world. We build upon what we know, what we measure, what we observe, and we create a model that explains what we are seeing. That's what a scientific model is. It's not something that Einstein, Newton, and the Masons devised over lunch one day out of random facts. It doesn't mean that observations or the measurements that we make have to change. It's all about how those measurements are interpreted. That's about three feet. So, of course, if we've been through school and an education system, we've been introduced to this solar system. And we haven't really been given a choice in alternatives. We've been told, from the moment we step into the classroom, that this solar system is our reality. Well, you know, my teachers taught me that 12 inches was a foot. Now, I could have challenged that, but one, I would have had to have brought some evidence to suggest that maybe 12 inches isn't a foot, and I still would have been wrong. And we've been given a handful of scientists, philosophers, and astronomers and their observations to tell us that they have given us the scientific proof that we live on a globe. But really all we have is a bunch of compartmentalized explanations and interpretations of the observations and the measurements that we can make. Well, you know, it's funny that you should mention that, Nick. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people out there that made observations in the distant past. Eratosthenes, Plato, Copernicus, Kepler, Newton, even Einstein, that suggest that we have a certain model for our universe and our, our world. Now, what's really cool about that is they're not the only ones that can make those observations. For example, if you had gotten off of your butt and had an open mind, you could have calculated the circumference of the Earth on March 20th as easily as we did. You know, it's not that difficult. And you can go on out and make actual measurements of the horizon using a theodolite instead of just eyeballing it and saying the horizon reaches your eye level. You could have done a water level like uh, Critical Think did at Monkey Park, where you gleefully looked out from the platform and said that the horizon rises to eye level. He brought a water level to that exact same platform and showed that the horizon was below water level. You could have done that, Nick, but you chose not to because your narrative is more important than the facts. So again, just to be clear, nothing changes. The angles at which we see the sun rise and set anywhere on the earth or um, the eclipses that we see from time to time, the predictions that we can make in no way dictate that we live on a globe, especially when we look up at the sky to make those observations 
and then attempt to determine that that dictates we live on a spherical spinning Earth. Well, you know, Nick, you're absolutely correct. Our observations of the heaven don't determine the shape of our Earth or that we are on a spinning globe. The fact that we have got hundreds of thousands of observations, measurements, inductive reasoning, we were able to develop a model of our Earth that is a spinning globe. And that spinning globe model enables us to predict things in the future. Now, for example, the ancients were able to suggest that we may have an eclipse coming up in the spring because we had had an eclipse every other spring for the last generation that they could remember. All right. Did they get it right? Once in a while, they sure did. We have a saying down south, even a blind squirrel gets a nut sometimes. But they missed an awful lot of them. Given the fact that we now have a very accurate model of our spherical rotating Earth in our universe and our orbit around the sun, we can very precisely predict both solar and lunar eclipses decades in advance and to the second. That's the difference between the hit and miss of the ancients that didn't understand the model or didn't have a model, and us now having a working, accurate model. That's what a scientific model allows us to do, Nick. Well, guys, welcome to the first episode of Fifty Shades of Phuket. We're going to explore the philosophy, the scientific knowledge, and the fantasies of one Nick Phuket word. So take a second, hit that little logo down there in the lower right corner, and make sure you, you click the bell so that you get notified when these come out. And I hope you enjoy the series. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll see you again soon. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.